IVB here. This is the third in a three-part series on how do you install a security system, how do you program it, and then this uh, today's topic will be how do you uh, use a home automation engine to uh, monitor it and react accordingly or do things with your other things that are under control like lighting or TVs or stereos. Um, I happen to use CQC, that's what I'm going to use for this particular example. If you use HomeSeer, which is I think the other big, there's only two real commercial options that I would uh, recommend. Um, so that's the other one, and then I know OpenHab is an open source, so that's pretty cool that you have an open source option as well. Um, I don't actually know anything about Homes here, OpenHab, but uh, there's people on people on Reddit and their forums uh, love it, so I'm, I'm sure it's great. Um, like I said, I can only talk to you about what I personally know, uh, which is CQC. So let's walk you through how you would connect that up. All right, here we go, and into CQC we are. Uh, before uh, we get started, uh, for those of you not uh, familiar with CQC, let me just give you a quick overview. This is the 5.0 version. It is beta, um, but it's just about ready to go GA, so I don't think anything's going to change. Five sections. This is the main engine uh, admin interface. This is where you build it all up. Uh, interfaces, events, coding, etc. Uh, coding is point and click. Um, five buttons. We're only going to go through two of them. Uh, when you first get the up, first thing you got to do, tell CQC, hey, I got a new device. So right, you know, you go into devices. This happens to be the server I want to add it onto. I click add driver. Um, I go to the elk and then I type in a cute little name, my elk. Uh, port number, this is the same thing you typed into elk RP. And what is the IP address of that ethernet expander? Um, I'm going to put in a dummy one here. I don't use custom values. I click the install button, which I ain't gonna because they don't work. And now uh, CQC realizes you have an elk. First thing though you're gonna want to do is there's actually a client interface. Uh, remember elk had all those zone numbers, three, five, eighteen, whatever. Yeah, who's gonna know what that is? And do you want to keep a cheat sheet around? I, I certainly don't. So elk has uh, some sorry, CQC allows you to rename these uh, zones. So you see here, uh, and I have this blocked out for privacy, but you can uh, uh, give all your um, zone numbers um, unique uh, names that make English sense. Um, that's great. So now when you go through and you put all that stuff in, um, you see here, um, this is where uh, you can see here it's not ready to arm. Um, you got your digital outputs, which I'm not going to go over. Uh, motion. Um, you can see somebody's in the dining room right now, and I'll bet you that'll go false. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, I'm sorry. They're in the kitchen too. They're moving around in the kitchen. I just noticed. So um, that's where you can see the motions. You can see the status of any doors. You can see I got my doggy doors open right there. Um, any of these windows? I got a couple of windows open because it's a little toasty today. That's cute. Um, but still, this isn't terribly useful. Now you're, but CQC can see it. So what do you want to do? Uh, well, let's take a look at interfaces, um, and, and we actually just use phones. I, I don't even really use a, a laptop for any of this stuff. So all my screens are um, laptop size. Um, of course, this particular laptop, you'll see in a second here, it's um, it's a really crappy resolution because I, I took my old monitor, I'm sorry, I took my old laptop to put uh, Camtasia on, which is what I'm using to record it, so you can't actually see this whole thing. Uh, you got to scroll up and down. But this is what I would see on my phone. Um, and so what I did is um, I decided I wanted some pretty little art. So, ooh, so pretty, right? Um, came up with a keypad. And um, so now you can see here, not only do I have a keypad, but I have this field. And what this field does is, if you recall, you saw the um, not ready to arm just a few seconds ago. Yeah, that was this field right here. So I can point and click and just paint whatever screen I want. This is uh, there's no coding. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, what's even cooler though is now what I can do is um, take a look and I and I decided, uh, oh, different art. Um, I'm going to scroll very carefully so I don't show you too much stuff. Um, I decided to paint a screen with the, and this is the editor so it's not the runtime uh, version of it, um, with um, all the different zones I have. And it is not actually really just green. Um, just give me a sec here. But what happens is, if the doggy door, oh, if the doggy door is closed, if it's secure, it's green. If it's not secure, uh, it's yellow. I mean, I could have made it red too, I, I suppose. Um, and there's other values as well, but I just use the uh, green and yellow. So now I got a screen where I can take a look at a snapshot and see every single door or window 
Um, that's open. That's also interesting. But it's not that interesting. What's really interesting then is let's look at events. That's where the interesting thing comes in. CQC has scheduled and triggered events. You're not going to schedule. I mean, I guess you could schedule a midnight arming your security, but I don't know. I wouldn't do that. Triggered is going to be the much more interesting thing. And you can see I got a bazillion different triggers in CQC. And each one of these things is got a bunch of things in it. So let me show you one thing in specific. Actually, I apologize before I show you that one. Let me show you this one on the screen. I actually have a screen where uh, you don't want to have something happen the second motion is expired. Uh, you want to give it some time. And so what I set up in CQC is a user, like right on my phone, that's more of a settings uh, screen because um, I rarely modify it. But, you know, I can have for each location, and I have a few more boxes down here. I don't want to show you uh, room names. Um, but this plus, this will actually populate with the current number of minutes that I want to show. Um uh, before of uh, no motion before the auto shut off happens so what happens is and you can adjust the number you click you know the user use your finger press this button on your phone or you know, drop it and so right now i think i have it set to 15 minutes of no motion um and if in the middle of that motion um i'm sorry if in the middle of 15 minutes motion happens again it resets the counter so once that happens where did my triggered event go motion motion i'm gonna just show you the master bathroom because um, that's one that everybody can mentally understand. Um, what do I do? And this is my real system. Um, turn off the ceiling light, turn off the vanity light, turn off the fan. Because, uh, boy, we have a habit of not being able to turn those things off. Um, if this happened to be one, for example, in the dining room, uh, what I could do is, oops, uh, you can see this is all point and click. I could say that um, either the Harmony or, you know, I actually have my uh, receiver directly connected. So then I can say... You know, value off, turn off the uh, Morant. I could, um, or I could say, or and I could say, where's my TV? I got my TV, right? So I could turn my TV off um, if there's been no motion. Um, actually, and I do have that in the dining room, but I have that set up for 90 minutes uh, for a timeout. Because even if we're watching a movie, uh, nobody ever goes 90 minutes without moving a little bit to trigger that motion detector. So now you see here, that's how, and I want to fix it without saving changes. So that is how you can use a home automation engine like CQC to both monitor different sensors that you have in your elk, as well as take action and paint your phone uh, with whatever custom screen you want, and then uh, take um, intelligent action based on what it sees. Um, I don't personally know uh, HomeSeer or OpenHab. i um, heard great things about both of them, so um, I don't know exactly what's entailed in, in using them, um, but it can't be that much harder. Um, I think it all depends on what package suits your fancy, right? Um, so uh, there it is. Thanks for uh, watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos on how to set stuff up. Have a good night.